Hey guys, Case here at High Desert Outfitters. Um, it's been a minute, the shop's been crazy. So because of that, personal stuff gets put on the back burner, but we're now gonna finish my new setup for this year. Uh, last video, we finished up the rest. Got it set, timed and tuned. I've shot quite a few arrows through it, let the strings settle out. I just retimed the cams, which they weren't off. Top was just a hair slow. Got my cams retimed, so now we're gonna run through paper. Um, I'll be shooting Victory's Extortion with stainless this year. Uh, arrow's running 568. I like a little heavier arrow. We'll get it done paper tuned. Um, then we'll go through the chronograph and get some info on that. So, we'll see what she does. What we'll be doing is running my arrow through paper. Um, we have it right around the six foot mark, five yards. Um, gives it just a second to come out of the bow clean. Just the type piece of paper is going to give us a tear reading on what it's doing. Hopefully the bullet holes probably won't, but that's why we do it. We'll put one through, see what she looks like. So from here we can see left tear. Veins are coming out, kicking left to point, uh, I would say about an inch. So what I'm going to do is I want to add a little bit of cameline to compensate for my fat hand. So here's what we found. So the point is entering on that right side. Fletchings are kicking to the left. Um, that point is just outside of the edge of that vein. Not the worst left kick tear, but it is something we are going to fix. So I'm going to get that, those veins and that point to be centered on each other and get a bullet hole. So now to the press. So since we have that left tear, it's wanting my veins to go right or point left. I don't want to move my rest much. In fact, I like to keep it dead center of everything. So what we'll do is we'll add just a hair bit of cam lane. Fletchings left needing to go right because I want to take the, that cam and lean it to pull fletchings over. Um, it's not a very big tear, so I'm only going to do uh, one and one. So I want to loosen that right or sight side cable one turn. Which lets that axle move up, and then I'm going to tighten this one the same turn so I keep the same length on my cable. If I'd only done one, this cable would have been longer or shorter, taking it out of time. So since I took one turn out, put one turn back in, which will give me just a little bit of cam lean, but keep the cables in time. So now, we go back through paper. Alright, so now we did that adjustment, so we're going to go back through paper. See what she did. So this was our first hole with a slight left tear. That's our second tear. Left and right's much better. We're just a hair point low. So I want to give the rest about a half click. See if I can't get that straight. And, and what would this be right here, Case? This is a whoops. Don't worry about that. What, what rest, happened? Rest cable wasn't quite set. Rest didn't drop. Tore gray. So what that happened is, is that when- That has now since been fixed. What happened is when Case put the first adjustment in it, he uh, somehow pulled his little rest cable out there since it's not finished, so he's just got it in there now. If you have to adjust anything, pulled the rest cable out. Second shot through uh, paper, rest didn't drop. Rest didn't drop. So since that point was just a hair low, I'm going to raise that rest up just a little bit. Normally, an up down tear indicates one of two things rest isn't set quite right or your cams aren't timed. Um, you have one faster or slower than the other, that's gonna cause a porpoise. I just came out of the hooter shooter, so I know my cams aren't timed. So I'm gonna bring this up just almost none, but a little bit. And that's what's handy about these rip cords is, that was it. I didn't have to worry about it sliding or not being exactly where I wanted it to be. So now, we give her another try. Let's see. So that's our last tear, which we're still just a hair point low. So I'll give it one more little click and we'll try one more time. Okay, small adjustment.
And that's what we want. That point entered directly in between all three of those veins, centered. I don't have a left kick, right kick, high, low. Definitely don't have that. That's bad. If yours does this, <laughs> seek immediate medical attention for your bow. So, now we're gonna run through the chronograph. Um, weighed my arrow, 568. Um, this is the 80 pound RX3. So we're gonna see what's doing through the chronograph, run some math and get some numbers. See what kind of kinetic energy and momentum I'm carrying. Okay, so now we're gonna run through the chronograph. Um, 29 inch, 568. See what it gives me. Seventy seventy two shoot one more, get an average. Duplicate 272. We're pulling. Uh, coming in a touch heavy, 85.5. I don't remember how I got it to show up. Oh, there it is. There it is, 85.5. Feels good. So we're going to run some numbers through the calculator and just for peace of mind to see how much energy I'm creating. So there's a bunch of calculators out there. Gold Tip has a great one. This one is the one that comes up first anytime we type in Archery KE. Don't know exactly how accurate everything is, but it's the one we continuously use to give us just kind of a, an idea to give to people. Um, so my arrow weight, was at that 568, shooting 270. Puts me at 91 foot pounds, 0.681 slugs. Um, I was going to see about getting the 13.